Damn, son. <laughs> Happy Memorial Day, everyone. Welcome to Boss Blunt's Think Tank. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Welcome. Appreciate having you. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to discuss retail investors. Retail investors that just so happen to love AMC and GameStop and BBIG and many other meme stocks. I'd like to preface this video by sharing a piece of information that uh, very, is very important to us that a lot of people are unaware uh, as of May 26th through a period of June 7th, 2022, unfortunately, it seems that federal employees and military personnel will be unable to access their thrift savings plan, their TSP accounts, which is basically a 401k of sorts for federal employees and military members. What this means is that for this two-week period, these federal employees and military personnel will be unable to buy or sell anything in their investment accounts, meaning that if the stock market goes up, they'll be unable to lock in those gains. And if the stock market goes down, they would be unable to prevent further losses. This is important because there's a few, few pieces of evidence, unfortunately, that uh, are showing us some very interesting information and it has been confirmed by both Fidelity and E-Trade amongst others that President Biden's Executive Order 14032 pertaining to Chinese military industrial complex companies is a sanction and a sanction and executive order signed by President Biden that supersedes Executive Order 13959 pertaining to communist Chinese military companies. This new order prohibits purchases in publicly traded securities and corresponding derivatives of any company determined to be operating in the defense or surveillance sector 
of the People's Republic of China. The prohibition's effective date was August 2nd, 2021, but the actual date for this executive order to be reflected on markets is going to be June 3rd, 2022. So on June 3rd, 2022, we're going to begin to see this executive order be priced in to stock markets. But in reality, we've already seen it beginning. We've already seen the, this order begin to get priced into stock markets. But in reality, the real price action is going to come like it did the last two times in January of 2021 and in Ju I'm sorry, May and June of 2021, in which the last two times that the order uh, 13959, the one that 14032 now supersedes, uh, created a situation in which market makers, prime brokers and hedge funds were being margin called. And that led us to all time highs on both AMC and GameStop in 2021. And as of late, there are over 4 million investors, retail investors in AMC alone. There are also millions of GameStop investors and we know for a fact that we retail investors own 90% of the float. That is all shares that are supposed to be in existence for AMC. 90% of all shares are supposed to be in existence. Or we know that's not the case because market makers have a license to print fake shares. In the name of liquidity, they can sell naked shorts. They can sell synthetic shares that they do not own or have. They can sell securities to be purchased back in the future, and they use fair value accounting to prevent margin calls on those securities. But at this point, we know some of the biggest hedge funds and market makers, for example, Citadel Securities, has about $67 billion in assets and $67 billion in securities sold, not yet purchased. That is the literal definition of naked shorts and synthetic shares. Shares sold, security sold, not yet purchased. And they use fair value accounting in order to come up with that $67 billion number. But in reality, when the market squeezes, fair value accounting goes out the damn window. And on that note, I'd like to thank Martin and the Think Tank and everybody else for being here with us today. We've got some stories from some current and former military personnel and their families, and we'd like to share them with you. Uh, and mainly, why we're invested in companies like AMC and GameStop, what brought us here, when did we begin our journey, and where do we look to for support? And lastly, how? How did we fucking get here? How could we be so lucky than to be blessed by the greed of Wall Street, big banks, and hedge funds to the point where systemic collapse is going to make investors that have been paying attention extremely fucking rich? Again, welcome to Boss Blunt's Think Tank. Uh, Martin, you want to pull somebody up? I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, I'd like to start with Koshi, actually, because she was uh, really the spirit of every, everything that is the military. She was first to stand up and say, yes, I would like to. I would love this. that. What's up, Kashi? It's good to hear from you. How are you? How are you? We're doing great. Thanks so much for being here with us. We appreciate you, uh, you know, sharing some of your story. You know, we are live, so... You know, by all means, feel free to get personal, but please don't give away any personal information. All right. Uh, no problem. So I've been in the Navy now going on almost 11 years. I'm currently stateside on shore duty, so I've had quite a bit of time to get into investing in the past couple of years. And that's pretty much how I got into AMC and GameStop. So right before the whole, like, Right around the time, right before it had that uh, 2020 January run, 
is what I got in, and I've been pretty much following it since then. Kashi, did you happen to get in before DFV, Deep Fucking Value, was on TV in late January? I'm just wondering about that. I had, like, a couple shares, but I wasn't actually, like, following what was going on until after all that happened. It was a real eye, an eye-opener to see a guy discussing in front of Congress why he loves stocks like GameStop, wasn't it? It was, and it kind of just kind of showed, like, how, like, the little person who was just showing how they liked something, like, why are they going to court over something about something they liked and weren't investing in? That's a great point. Why does guy why do guys like Dr. Michael Burry and DFV have to go to court to testify in front of Congress for making legal purchases and sales when you've got market makers and hedge funds using latency arbitrage to front run trades and creating synthetic shorts out of thin air and selling naked shorts with no intent to deliver, creating further failure to delivers. Why is that legal? But we can't like the stock. What's the problem with that? That's fantastic, Kashi. Appreciate you. Martin, if you have any questions, by all means, brother, fire away. Yeah, Kashi actually told me that she had done some plan changes in her TSP, if you would willing to share that as well. Yeah. After, you know, don't be too personal. You know, don't give away any. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so um, when I started like getting more into AMC and GameStop and I decided to join Twitter because it seemed like that's where a lot of good information was put out. And I fell on to AMC Bigums, and then he kind of led me on to Boss, and I started following all his tweets, and that's where I saw the TSP mentions and how they were going to lock us out of our own accounts because they didn't mention that to any of us. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I started telling my family and my coworkers and then, like, of course, my students because I'm on instructor duty right now. Like, I really think you should move all your funds into the G fund while you were being locked out for a good week or two, just in case any market volatility could happen. And if nothing happens, you can always swap it back. But it's just interesting, like, all these dates just happen to line up right around the same time. And yeah, that's really interesting. So what's so specific about this G fund, if you can discuss that? The G fund is the only fund that is not managed by BlackRock as, an, the, as the asset manager. And it's essentially the safest fund with the least, I guess, amount of growth. But nothing, I guess you could say, could. there's not that much volatility into it. So you don't have a, a chance for it to go down out th of nowhere. In theory, that is, that is the concept, yes. And I would like to everybody to note that none of us are financial advisors, and this is not financial advice of any kind. From my understanding, in 2008, some people who invested in the G fund, or you know, the the G fund for the thrift savings plan, which is uh, you know, the G fund not being owned by BlackRock, gives an opportunity for some people to kind of avoid that uh, conflict of interest that BlackRock has at, as the Federal Reserve's right hand man. Uh, that being the case, it seems that in 08, many people did okay in the G fund as far as in terms of they didn't lose a ton of money when a lot of others did. Uh, but there also won't be major growth factors. At the very least, if you can't make more money off the situation, it would probably be a good idea to preserve the money that you currently have and then eventually decide to do something else with it, whether it be to keep it in uh, in the TSP or to move it into other uh, sorts of, you know, tangibles or other investment forms. Now, we cannot tell you what the best form of investment would be for any particular person because that's not why we're here. None of us are financial advisors. I'm here to say thank you 
to all of our former and current military personnel for your service and sacrifices that you have made to enable the rest of us to live, for the most part, free, comfortable lives. So for this, I thank you, I truly do, and we appreciate you, every single one of us. Uh, Kashi, thanks so much for telling us a little bit about it. Do you mind if I ask, you know, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, AMC, GameStop? What are you looking towards for the future here? What are you thinking? We're going to be so fucking rich. God damn, I love that answer. <laughs> you know, and it's unfortunate. Um, none of us really want to, or really want to, you know, kind of like dance at the fact that all this is happening. You know, none of us are looking to rub it in. We're more so trying to inform of the possibilities. Because when you think about it, maybe nothing happens. But then when you also think about it, we heard Fox on Fox News last week that BlackRock is uh, considering investing the thrift savings plan in Chinese merging markets. This was on May 17th, the day after they... Uh, the last the day after the last day to submit or access all forms so on may 16th was the last day to submit or access all all forms either online or by hard copy which includes in order to make withdrawals rollovers or transfer requests as well as beneficiary changes to your thrift savings plan and it was the last day to contact the thrift savings plan by either by email on the following day the may 17th fox news came out and had blackrock thrift savings plan money manager telling us that they were considering putting hundreds of billions of dollars in, into Chinese emerging markets. That is an absolute travesty in my opinion. We see China gearing up to sell off all assets outside of China. All Chinese oligarchs, officials, members of the Chinese Communist Party must divest themselves of all outside equities and assets of all sorts. This is because China understands that Taiwan is going to be a point of contention for the United States and NATO, much in the way that Ukraine has been for Russia and NATO countries. Uh, not for Russia, Ukraine, and NATO countries with America. Go ahead, Martin. You want to speak with somebody else? Yeah. Please? I would like to bring up Schmo if he's available. I see him in here, but I don't, I'm not sure if he's, he's figured out the discord on the computer no worries thanks again kashi for sharing we really appreciate you thanks so much for your service to our country and we owe you a lot thank you for sharing while we wait uh for those of you that are unaware china has recently their main bond trading platform for foreign investors has recently stopped providing data on their transactions this move uh, provides heightened concerns about transparency in China's $20 trillion debt market after record outflows have been occurring for months in the worst bond route that we've seen in, this, in the world in the last 800 years. We have not seen bonds in such bad shape in the last eight hundred years and that's a fact oh big by the way kashi since you mentioned it big props to amc bigums uh fantastic member of the community make sure you guys check them out on youtube and twitter amc bigums has a lot of excellent information uh regarding uh, regarding market manipulation and the fed abuses that have been occurring and one thing that I'd like to mention that we don't often talk about on this channel, Martin, you can jump to the next person if you like, but the volatility index has yet to price in this executive order. Executive order 14032 is likely to cause the most volatility that we've seen on the stock market since the 2020, COVID, you know, since the 2020 pandemic stock market crash that the United States and central banks around the world used as an excuse to print 40% of all fucking money in existence in the last 18 months.
And at some point, we know that BlackRock and Vanguard and Fidelity, with massive exposure, will divest themselves of all CMIC holdings. All Chinese military industrial complex companies are done for. The S&P 500 yeah. is off to the worst start to a year in the first 100 days that we've seen since 1932, 1940, and 1970. The fourth worst start to a year in history. But the VIX, the volatility index, is below $30. At some point, there will be an emergency. And the panic will begin. Go ahead, Martin. Yeah, uh, we've got another one. This is an international one. It's Mixture Maker from the Frigid Waste of the North. The Frigid Waste of the North. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm way brother? up north. How um, are you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing quite well. I have my brother next yeah. to me. He's listening in uh, as well. Um, oh, yeah. Thanks for joining well, us. Well, I'm up. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm up in the northern parts of Sweden, so uh, in the summer we don't even get any darkness. It's light all all day round. Well, there and, are drawbacks. Uh, I know this. Yeah, <laughs> a bit cold in the winter though. <laughs> so I'm a former um, Swedish Armed Forces um, K9 tracker in the Air Force. Um, so thank Martin you for asked your me service. To, like, yeah, uh, didn't do any, you know, not anything abroad, but um, they don't really send canine trackers to the desert. <laughs> 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 so <clears throat> all, all national stuff. Um, been this, uh, was in the military for about six years. Um, figured that... Um, the pay was too shitty, so I got a degree as a composite technician, like fiberglass and carbon fiber and stuff. And uh, currently working with that. That's excellent, man. It's fantastic. Thanks so much for sharing. Uh, what got you starting to invest in the stock market and specifically, you know, meme stocks? Um, I think it was about two years ago. My brother started dabbling with investments just you know swedish swedish uh, companies and stuff and i was like yeah you know i'll try it out and did it for a few weeks put through some you know a few hundred bucks in nothing major uh, i i had just gotten out of school as well um right as covid hit so i was pretty much jobless nobody was hiring everybody was um you know taking the um well, stimulus paychecks, and to get the stimulus, like the company stimulus, you couldn't hire people. So I was, you know, shit out of luck there. Um, but thankfully, my dad has his own company, so he hired me um, because he needed, you know, grunt work done. And I worked there, started dabbling a bit with, you know, Swedish stocks, and um, then I laid off for like, maybe four or five months or something. And then another coworker at my dad's company, um, a few years older than me, I'm currently 30. And he told me like, have you heard about, you know, GameStop and meme stocks? Because oh, he was man. like in the Reddit team. And I was like, no, no, dude, I haven't, haven't heard anything. And this was, I think, the first real run up. January. Like, yeah, like when it started peaking during January in the middle of the winter. And I was like, no. So I started looking into it and uh, I bought shares at like, I don't know, 330 or something. And it went up a little bit and then it just tanked. And, you know, that's kind of heart heartbreaking. Um, but, it is, you but know, we didn't know like, at the time why, did we? No, no, nobody knew. Like, why did it fall? And I talked to, like, I have international friends that I, 
play games with, like in the in Canada, in Great Britain, in the US, in Australia. Nobody knew. Like everybody was like, "Oh, the run is over. Like the squeeze is over." And I was like, uh, "I'm kind of skeptical about that." Um, yep. So and you were absolutely I, right. I just, You're right to yeah, be skeptical. I just, I just averaged down. Just average, average down, and I told my brother about it, and he invested. You know, I don't know, maybe a, a thousand, two thousand bucks or something. And you know, just coming out of school, you know, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Period. And yeah, and mm -hmm. you're like twenty five grand in debt from you know school. So I just started average, averaging down, like all that I could manage to, like. I was basically just laying low, not buying anything, and just working. So I put all my money like into GameStop, and I just kept buying more and more and more. And when it was, you know, at the thirty mark, and I was watching, you know, uh, Jamie from, uh, uh, you know, trade spotting. I was watching Rocky Outcrop when he was starting out. Good man. And I just stumbled upon you, boss, like your channel in the summer. Um, I think it was like your fifth or eighth video. Oh wow! Yeah, well, you are an OG, and, brother. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I wasn't in the Discord. I, I was just watching the videos and uh, like trying to get like fishing for any information, like what is going on. This can't be just you know mm -hmm. people selling. It has to be something bigger. You're damn and, right it was. <laughs> By executive and watching order of the you, fucking boss, president. <laughs> and you, boss, you put fucking pen to paper. You, you dunk shit up that I had no idea how to even find, like where to look. So during like when it was down below 30 or something around 30, 40, I just stopped watching it. Um, like I had a, a month of break and then it ran up and I, I was like, catching up to it again started watching videos and my brother sold like he was going to have a kid he didn't want to stress about it so he sold and i was like yeah okay that's cool that's yeah. his choice everyone has to do what they've got to do for the whatever's best for their financial situation absolutely yeah. i mean we are individual investors mm -hmm. we're not financial advisors exactly and uh, i just started accumulating more shares like buying more shares even when ran to 100, 150, 200, and down again and up again, I was just, you know, putting in chips, like a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. And last summer, I was taking my car to service and uh, I was like, oh, it's kind of, I was kind of bummed up and that my brother sold. So I just took a piece of paper and I wrote, I wrote on it like three GameStop shares and then I hit the buy button and I wrote down how much I bought it for. All right. And I just wrote on the on the note, like with a pencil. I owe like, you. <laughs> yeah, this, this is this is for my brother. My man. Like these are his his three shares. So mm -hmm. whatever it goes to, that's what I'm gonna give him. That's beautiful, like, mixture. He, he, yeah, and he I did that like in the spring, and he called me one summer, like in the summer, and um, I just started my new new job. I took my car to service, and he he asked me like. So what do you think about, like, I, I never talked about it, like stocks or anything. And he, had, he asked me, like, what do you think about, you know, GameStop and meme stocks? And I was like, you really want to hear what I think? And I just laid it out, like everything with Evergrande, like the Chinese real estate market, the American real estate market, like everything you've said, boss. And I put in him to your channel. But I told him, like, cool. you don't have to stress about it. I bought three shares for you and your family. Like, whatever comes, it's, you're going to get three three shares worth. And he got really emotional about it. And then he sent me, a, like, a print screen, like, I bought shares. And I was like, fuck yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. You bought so shares. I brought him back. For your brother. And yeah. he pulled on his heartstrings. And he realized I fucked up. And yeah. he went out and... FOMO'd in and bought more shares? He oh bought my more. Yeah, that's beautiful. He's almost, he's almost caught up to, to like my amount. That's great, man. So I was like, do I really have to buy, like, give you three shares? You have like, so much. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You need to do that. Yeah, I still have the note in uh, the closet. Honor the man, Yeah. Yeah, wow, it's dude. written down. 
When so. he's got hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, and he pays you back the measly nine hundred dollars worth of three fucking shares, <laughs> you guys are gonna be laughing so fucking hard. It's gonna be yeah. phenomenal. That's great. Yeah, man. so th- you know that's kind of fun. Um, and we both got jobs like right across this. Um, because the funny thing is, when we went to school, he applied for the same education in composite as a composite technician as I mm-hmm. did. So, like we've been together for like basically the past three four years now we went to school together like hundred well like 1300 kilometers down south um i did i i think he mentioned that he applied but he applied for a bunch of other stuff as well and we just ended up you know across each other in the dorm and now we have a part an apartment together uh where we are now and he works at um i work at a a like a composite production uh, establishment, like a, a company, and he works in like a like at a science company. Uh, they do research on composites, mm-hmm. so like we have a small apartment together, um, and like so yeah, saving up that money for them. Yeah, just, just saving money, brother. Just saving money. I love it. That's great. And to hear, here we man. are. And here we are. You know what? Like you said, January, we didn't know here we are. what happened. We didn't know that there was allegations that the White House had conversations with Virtue and market makers to collude in order to get them to pull the buy button with broker dealers. They didn't know that on January 27th, of Vlad Tenev, Robin Hood's CEO and founder, said he said, quote unquote, Maybe this would be a good time for me to chat with Ken Griffin and uh, redacted evidence from discovery that was that took place during a uh, lawsuit against Citadel Securities in 2021 states that someone noted anecdotal evidence that several very large firms are having really bad nights, too. End quote. Jim Swartwout of Robin Hood replied, everyone is you wouldn't believe the convo we had with Citadel total mess. When broker dealers and prime brokers and hedge funds, market makers are looking at financial collapse, they will collude as needed to try to prevent it. And that's exactly what happened on January 28th. People were unable to buy AMC and GameStop, but they were able to sell it. Because they literally took away the buy button. That means the only button left was sell, which caused a lot of people to get scared and to be worried about that. Right before this happened, we saw several stock, several shares and fractional shares selling for thousands of dollars of GameStop, for example. We've seen fractional shares going for $5,124 on GameStop right before the market. I'm sorry, right before they went position close only. We've seen Robinhood and others unable to find shares, physically unable to find shares and to deliver shares for many investors. See if I can find this one actually, because I've got so many screenshots of manipulation that it's hard to find them when I'm looking for specific ones, which is quite hilarious. This is a screenshot of Robin Hood trying to fill $160 worth of AMC. They were able to fill 0.66 shares, 0.66 shares of AMC throughout the entire day, December 14th, 2021, beginning at 9.30 a.m. So $13.87 worth were filled and $146.13 worth remained unfulfilled at that moment. These are one of the signs of things that are occurring on the markets on AMC and GameStop. 
This is an order on January 28th, the day the buy button was pulled, about 60 seconds before the buy button was actually pulled at 9.34 a.m. Eastern Time. We received your order to sell 0.53034 shares of GameStop at the best available price. For those of you that are unaware, that is called a fractional share. I can sell 0.01, for example, or 0.1, one-tenth of a share if I'd like to. Moments later, the share filled. And Robin Hood said, fantastic. Your order to sell 0.53034 shares of GME GameStop has been filled at an average price of $5,124.50 per share. Your order is complete. If you multiply 5,124 times 0.54304, you can see that this person made $2,782.77773 repeating on this 0.54 GameStop shares. They then proceeded to cancel the sell of one GME after that, presumably to probably increase their price. <laughs> All right, now that that's been said, we've got a little bit of an indication on what happened on January 28th and January 27th and how we got there. For those of you that are just, just stumbled in at this very moment, there was an executive order that Executive Order 13959 by President Donald Trump that caused communist Chinese military companies on a list uh, to be basically unusable collateral and worthless on American markets as of January 28th. Since the margin calls were so great, prime brokers and broker dealers had to collude with market makers to go position close only and prevent further buying of meme stocks. This wasn't only because of this executive order, but also because of the fear of missing out and the gamma ramping and the, and the delta hedging that was occurring by market makers and by banks due to all of the people buying GameStop and AMC and seeing DFV, I believe his name is Gil, if I recall, on TV in front of Congress testifying about all of the information that he found and the synthetic, the proof of synthetics and the ISDA contracts and the married puts and everything else that he found, which caused a further exacerbation of the problem. Martin, would you like to continue, brother? Yeah, uh, we got Shmoey as well. You guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome. Hey, what's up, gents? How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm good. Hey, Marcel, I just wanted to I just wanted to come on and and say that I really appreciate all the work that you do, man. You're a fucking legend, bro. I'm uh Thanks, I guess. <laughs> I'm just another just another retail investor, man. I appreciate it, but I'm yeah. just another retail <laughs> investor looking to share what I've learned so that people can use it to go do their own homework, you know? So appreciate you. Absolutely, bro. Hey, I've been following you for a while. Um, I think I picked up on you uh, about a, uh, last summer. Um, shit, man, let me start my story. Um, yes, I'm almost 15 years active duty Navy. I cuss a lot. I'm a sailor. God so, bless you. Um, so I, I started out. Um, so basically my retail story starts out. Uh. I sold a house in Hawaii approximately uh, 2019 and in, in the fall of 2019. I, I came into quite a bit of money after that sale. Um, you know, I started out as a regular retail investor. Uh, hey, you know what? I'm going to pick up a couple of these stocks here, a couple of these stocks there. Let's see what goes. And then I got dragged into, into all this stuff. So you, you guys kind of know how that goes. <laughs> um so what a made you, what, what, how did you first hear about AMC and GameStop on Curiosity? Oh, man. Um, honestly, it was Trey. Uh, cool. You know, I know that's kind of like a, 
it's kind of like a thing, kind of like a shitty thing now. No, no, not which, at all. You know, obviously, not at all. But, but, but we love Trey. Trey's a good guy. No, I like Trey. Yeah, I like Trey. Uh, I, I caught wind of uh, the AMC thing when when Trey was preaching about it. You know, back in the like the six, seven, eight dollar range, a long time ago. Excellent, man. Excellent. So, so yeah, you had a little I bit of money first, from your investment. Uh, it sounds like you so you sold some real estate and you were looking to get into the markets. You got into the markets. You ended up hearing about uh, AMC and GameStop uh, through social media, from the sounds of it. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. I have I originally invested in the first Doge run up there. Um, Doge ran right along with uh, GameStop and AMC in the, in January 2021. You know, isn't it funny um, the way that worked out? Yeah, it's a it's a fucking it's a cracker, isn't it? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, so Doge ran up, and I really wasn't in the stock market as far as the squeeze play for those two. But I ended up catching the Doge run up, and uh, I, I got quite a bit of money out of that. And I was just like, "Hey, man, what you know what the, what's going on here?" So um, I found AMC, and you know I realized that the AMC GME play was absolutely not over. So. I took a lot of my profits and it was almost like a calling for me. You know, it's really weird of the timing of it. It was really, really, really strange in my opinion. This is where it kind of gets weird for me. So it was like, it was kind of like a calling for me. It was perfect timing. It was like, let's get into this. Let's try to get some generational wealth. Let's see what happens. You know, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a calling for me, man. So I, I aped all of my profits you know, um, eventually transferred. I had a, I was pretty diversified, but I eventually going pretty much, you know, AMC, you know, I got a little bit of GME, but, uh, mostly AMC and, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there right now and I ate, I, I got my dad in on it. My dad is, uh, I'm originally from West Virginia. My dad's sitting there in West Virginia. He got fucked in 2008. Recurring theme over here. It sounds like. A lot of people yeah, that he are got invested fucked in, in these 2008. stocks got fucked in 08, huh? Yeah, yeah, man. He got fucked in 08. This is kind of like his revenge, too, and he said, fuck him. So. <laughs> How many of us did they put out of our homes, out of our businesses, out of our jobs? How many people were left with no investments, no car, no place to live, nothing to eat, no financial future we've rebuilt that slowly over the last decade or so and now hedge funds and banks are continually trying to take that away from us trying to short stocks out of existence the same way they did with toys r us and blockbuster but they never imagined that four million people would pile in and buy up 90 percent of the amc float to the point where they can't close out their synthetic shares and naked shorts and failures to deliver and rehypothecations and shorts marked as long and married puts and divorced puts. And I could go on, but they can't close all those out without buying our fucking shares. And that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Absolutely, bro. Hey, yeah, so like I ate, I ate them to AMC and I just continually kept bought and through. I bought, bought, bought my ass off last, all last year. Um, I bought all the way up and all the way down. I have not sold a single share and I'm hanging on to the fucking mother of all short squeezes. You are a true I, uh, in fucking hands. I like this man. <laughs> yeah, man. 7,615 shares all the fucking way. Let's I'm go. I'm sorry. Damn, Say that one more time. Say that one more time for those fucking assholes like Charles, Charles Gasparino that thinks that everybody who's invested in AMC and GameStop are fucking kids living in their mom's basement. How many fucking shares do you have, bro? I have 7,615 shares and I'm gripping them until these motherfuckers pay me. Absolutely beautiful. Fuck yeah. Beautiful. And I'm not letting go of a single fucking share. Um, they can go fuck their mothers, honestly. Sorry we for, the, uh, are for the kids the in the whale. Car. Where the fuck is Wolfie? We are the fucking whale. Yeah, man. I, I love the think tank. I can't get in on here uh, too much because of, of work. I got three little little rugrats running around and whatnot. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm in Sicily uh, currently working. 
But um, I love you guys, and you guys are the best, man. Thank um, you. I got my dad sacrifice. eighth into yeah. it too. I think he has like two K. Yeah, we're your dad has. We're just waiting. We're waiting around also? until somebody fucking pays us, man. Damn, man. Look at that. Look at that. Four digit holders. Strong four digit holders. Thank you for your services. Thank you for your sacrifice. We appreciate you. I am honored. Love you guys, man. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Twitter, man. I'm usually, you probably see me every once in a while. High Life Ape. Kind of Check out High Life Ape on Twitter, people. My man, Shmuel. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Holding almost 8,000 fucking shares of AMC. Strong. Diamond hands. I love it, man. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, thanks you. Thank you guys for your uh, for your time and everything. I love the think tank. Cash, what's up, dog? Wolfie, love you guys. Martin, boss, obviously. Jams, yeah, y'all. Love you guys. You as well. And remember, people, this is not a pissing match. This is not a uh, measuring competition. You know, if somebody like Schmo decides to share how many shares he has, that is his. You know, that's his right. Nobody's pressured. To, to share any information beyond what they would like to share in any way. Just yeah, and if, you, uh, if Ken Griffin or any other hedge fund is listening to me right now, go fuck your mother. You can go fuck <laughs> I love this guy. I'm going to hold on to my guy. shares until you decide you want to pay me. Pay fuck me, Ken yourself. Griffin. Get the fucking money printer out because you're going to need it. Very nice, Schmo. Thank you, brother. Martin, have you got someone else that wants to, yeah, wants to share uh, with us? Yeah, sort of. Cool. Uh, we've got. We can't talk about people in the in being the former military without mentioning our own Silverback. He has right. w promised Wolfie that he will be interviewed by him, but I think we should all recognize that we have this old grumpy guy that keeps <laughs> everybody honest, and he's uh, he's the North Pole to our. <laughs> Collective consciousness, so sort of, sort of. Yeah, that's a good good way to put it. Uh, Silverback, I would like to thank you personally for everything that you do for, for myself and for everybody in this community. Uh, we appreciate you, even if you're a hard ass, but that's why we love you. <laughs> thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for your service. And I appreciate you for taking all those pieces of shit out and saving potentially saving many millions of lives for your actions and your sacrifices. Thank you for that. Uh, you humble me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, Would you mind yeah, a little bit? Yeah. I'm, <clears throat> so Is somebody I'm tearing everybody... up? Huh? Is somebody tearing up a little bit? <laughs> no, actually, I just drank a fucking some of my coffee. And I almost had a I had phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, it's your story you tell it how you want to <laughs> so, i will um, i will i will no worries i will realistically i was in the military so long ago that that this really isn't um uh, there's no micro nucleus around on what i'm doing via military uh it just happens to be a, a part of my life that that uh that happened, uh, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent. Um, uh, made a lot of friends, lost some friends, and that's about all I have to say on the military aspect of it uh, right now. I just, um, I, I, I've always lived my life. You got to remember where you came from uh, in order to know where you're going. But at the same time, if you keep looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to miss your turn. So uh, that's it in a nutshell for me on on that. As far as the play, um, like everybody else, my wife and I are both in the engineering field, and uh, we had made a move from from uh, Missouri down to uh, Texas a few years ago. Uh, we were here about well, we purchased our house. We were here probably maybe five six weeks, and the the COVID fucking turd bomb happened. So they sent us to the house. We were contract as, as usual. We sent us to his house. We worked for, uh, from, from home for, I don't know, three or four or five months. And then they pulled a plug. Uh, basically, it wasn't the engineering firms that were pulling the plug. It was all the clients. So your, your Purinas, your Coke refineries, all those were trying to mitigate exposure on, on, on their sites, which mitigated exposure via the engineering firms. 
So when that happened, we went on, uh, uh, you know, the subsidy shit that came from the government. And, and to be honest with you, we've never really taken any type of uh, uh, been lucky, been blessed. We've never really had of any longevity, any any type of um, uh, uh, state aid for, for unemployment type stuff. But what it did is it forced us inside sitting here looking at the the 800 pound gorilla in the room. And that was, we had four, five, six accounts that were either in 401ks or IRAs or, or, uh, different things. And they were all doing fuck all. And it was when you have to sit down and look at everything and you realize what you're pulling in a month because of it, it's enough to make you punch a fucking nun in the mouth. So we elected to, uh, gank everything out. We put it in self-directed IRAs, uh, put it into our, uh, TD Ameritrade's and our Fidelities, and uh, we've got I don't know, eight accounts or whatever. I'm really working with four of them. Um, I was I had turned in three months, so I went from like penny stock trading like years ago, and then gave up on it because I was getting fucked all the time because I didn't know anything about the market. <laughs> Listening to and you um, do that, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was just it was like yeah, it left a bad taste in my mouth. So. At that point, though, I was like, fuck it. I'll just do some – I'll inform myself. I'll start looking at videos and everything else. And I have basically turned from October of the uh, year before uh, till December. I more than tripled our, our uh, stakes. So, nice. so we – you know, yeah, it was, it was great. I, I got into some really good trades. And um, that was about when the end of February uh, – January, actually ended January, maybe it was February. Um, I got, I saw AMC and heard all about this shit. And once again, one of them was Trace Trades and some other guys. And I realized that it, to me, I didn't get into this, uh, this play. Um, I, I thought it was just an undervalue play. So, you know, when you see, you know, AMC, which has been around damn near, what, a hundred years, 80 years, whatever the hell it is. And they're, they're, uh, you know, they're at the five to seven dollar range. Something's not fucking right, especially when Santa Mark and all these others are in the thirty five, forty five. So I, I saw it as a, an opportunity to come in and and uh, do a positive uh, asset surge on on uh, something, you know, three months, maybe six months. And then the more and more involved I got into it, uh, I was realized there was some fuckery going on. Now, I just happened to run across Astro. Um, and I, it, it was literally the day of, and I mentioned something on a tweet and boss had commented something and I started talking to boss. So I, I met, I didn't know about bosses, Marcel's, uh, uh, YouTube channel. I didn't know about his discord. I didn't know fuck all about it. He just was so personable and so understanding of where I was at that he started DMing me on Twitter. And that's what pulled me into this. And then, and then the the schooling came, you know, you with everybody that was involved in it, with with watching all of of Marcel's uh, um, uh, videos, and, and and I got into the Discord, and it was so overwhelming. But it was, I mean, I I was doing nothing. I wasn't working. Hell, all I was doing is is watching his shit and, and on his Discord, damn near twenty four seven. And he is single-handedly the reason that I maintained my positions um, in both G uh, GameStop and AMC wow. because he he informed me. Yeah, I mean, Marcel, you you have no idea. You have a you might have a, a, an inkling of of how many people's lives that you've changed or impacted for for the greater good. Um, but I don't think you'll you'll always have a, a special spot for me. And in my heart, you, you'll always have a special, uh, a special uh, spot. And it just, um, it, it was always about the money until it wasn't. Because at some point, I realized the level of fuckery, and I was like, I don't give a fuck what it is now. Every fucking opportunity I had to put cash into an account to, fuck, to do another trade, that's what I did. Now, I'm not up at 7,000, but I'm, I'm, Pretty, I'm getting closer to that midpoint of the, the thousands. Um, and with my options, I mean, I, I honestly, in my heart, believe that it, I, I could have 10,000 shares if, if, if not right. more. 
That's fucking right, man. And I'll be honest with you, when these dicks start fucking printing and everything else, I'm going to be doing nothing but getting a bigger and bigger and bigger position and penis to shove it up Ken Griffith's ass. (laughs) I will fuck him like a Chinese love doll. That's a fact. to me like you're looking to make a lot of money off a premium and exercising call contract. (laughs) <laughs> oh, dude! You know, you, I, it's like every day I get up and I can feel my face stretching from my heart on. So Holy there shit. it is, with sandpaper. Don't forget that. Yeah, that's right. So I just wanted to. The, the one thing I, I felt was pertinent for me to share was no matter what everybody thinks in discords um, on personal levels with people, pretty much I, I there's there's one reason I'm in Discord uh, other than to pay stuff forward. I think that we all have a an obligation to pay forth the knowledge, uh, you know, pay it forward the knowledge that we gather to help other people. Now, whether they listen or not, that's that's a that's a moot point. It's irrelevant. But those that are in Discord that come in that have no nefarious uh, agenda, they want to come in and learn, can absolutely learn stuff. I mean, you got got you know, we, shit, we're putting in stuff in there about growing plants and growing, uh, you know, the ability to do a garden. You know, that I put some stuff in about tax. Uh, uh, help and 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 exit plans, uh, exit strategies, and shit like that. I, we all have something we can offer up um, yeah. if we're willing to listen prior to to spouting knowledge. Um, it's it's a two way street. So to me, and I, I just want everybody to know where I come from on this. It's nothing personal when when I get onto somebody in Discord at all. It's not personal. It's it's we're in there for a reason. We have to maintain structure, structural integrity of the room. You hear me saying that all the time. But at the end of the day, it's not your discord. It's not my discord. It's Marcel's discord. So by that adage, anything that Marcel asks of me to help is what I'm going to do. And if that means you're on the opposite side of the fence, that I, I apologize. But you're either going to be escorted out or, or given a timeout or... You just get in line with everybody else. It's a pretty relaxed group, um, and we, uh, fuck, we everybody's got their problems. I mean, we we have little spats here and there. Help the, the mods have spats between each other, but we work it out. Um, yes, sir. I'm I'm not in there to make friends. If I make some on the way, great. If I don't, I'm I'm sorry I couldn't uh, be impactful on on any of your uh, knowledge or decision making. But, but we are all in this discord and a part of this community by the grace of Marcel. And that's pretty much all I have to say. You're something else, Said brother. Better than most people would have. <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Silverback. Thank you. Thank you very much for everything. Yes, sir. I think Silverback brings up a great point. Uh, however, we didn't... You know, I didn't create this discord uh, for making money. I didn't do it for any other purposes than to share information together in regards to financial markets, global issues, uh, macro and geopolitical concerns that are going to affect us and our families in the future. And that's why we have rules that some people may or may not agree with, but that doesn't really matter to me because there will be absolutely no collusion of any kind. There will be absolutely no financial advice of any kind, but there will be a lot of support, ideas, and trust being given and taken in, in throughout the Discord and the Think Tank, you know, and here on YouTube. And so thank you for, for being a, an integral part of this, uh, Silverback, and, and everybody else that, that goes, you know, especially, you know, the mods particularly because you guys put in extra effort uh, and everyone else in the, the Discord as well, even if you're not a mod, I see you, we see you, we see your posts, we appreciate it, and you know it because we'll regularly use that information to, you know, uh, verify and do further due diligence and, you know, tweet it out to help us out, you know, uh, and to, to, to work together to figure out what's happening with things, for example, such as the central bank digital currency and taxes and, you know... Um, forms that we're going to have to file when we make over $20 million in a day, for example. Uh, there's all sorts of things that we're going to have to be on the lookout for that if you're not very, that you're, if you're not careful and you don't get the proper advice from, say, a licensed 
financial attorney and a licensed financial accountant, you know, CPA, uh, both of those, that you will likely be in pretty bad shape come tax season. So because of that, there's a whole plethora of things that we discuss in in the Discord and on YouTube here uh, because the world is much larger than AMC and GameStop. I came into AMC and GameStop, like Silverback said, for the money because I saw the money that was changing hands and the wealth transfer that was happening due to over-leveraged hedge funds and banks. But I think the majority of us stayed for the financial reform because I'd like to have a stock market where I, my kids and I can trade without having to worry about dark pool abuse, without having to worry about latency arbitrage and front running of trades and synthetic shares being created in the name of liquidity and the SSR rule being thrown out the window in the name of liquidity. Well, you know, as someone, honestly, Marcel, would get off their ass and go ahead and get lit exchange going, we wouldn't have some of these issues. But that's that is, that is true. That is true. My brother, we appreciate you. Like You're the best, dude. You're the best. <laughs> lit exchange coming soon, you know, to, to an, an iPhone, Android, and a computer near you. We're going to be trading without dark pools. Uh, we're going to be trading on lit markets. And that's why the name of the company is literally Lit Exchange. So I'm looking forward to it. In the near future, you guys uh, will be getting a lot more information. Uh, we're just finalizing some things that we've got to uh, before we can present further, uh, further details to the public. So thanks, Silverback. I appreciate you mentioning that. Good day every day, man. Awesome, brother. We have Mobile Jet who wanted to share a little bit as well. Yes, please. So, Mobile, can you hear us? It's all right. That push to talk can be difficult sometimes, I know. Yeah, it's a little weird. Mm -hmm. No worries. What's up, buddy? How are you? Maybe we can uh, try somebody else right now. Maybe Mobile Jet's taking a break. Yeah, sure. Uh, it was actually, I would like to share a little bit. I would love uh, that. Martin, I am, tell me. For, yeah, I'm former Swedish military. Uh, oh, yeah. Only did my mandatory year, uh, conscripts uh, and all that, back, back in 2005 and 2006. Uh, went to vocational school in 2008. Uh, had three cushy jobs as a lineman, one for the Swedish government, one for the local power company, and one job in Germany that got screwed wow. away from me due to 2008-2009. Then I became a carpenter. And I had a real douchebag of a co colleague that told me on, what was it, February 10th, that he had invested in GME on January 7th of 21. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and he said, well, should have, should have joined. And then I had a good three months to do some DD on my own and went into AMC uh, in mid April, I think it was the 23rd or something like that paid basically no money, uh, like 10, 12 bucks, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, and then I bought all, almost all the way up to 70. And I then lowered my average back down to tw when well, it's 23 now. And I got my, the number I had in my mind when I started, I got, I cleared that and then some. Nice. And uh, yeah. So and it sounds like the market like makers others. pushing this down the road helped you to get more shares. Yeah, they definitely did. <laughs> they definitely did. Uh, Smooth uh, move, Ken Griffin. I started. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I did some uh, research 
on YouTube as many others, uh, stumbled upon Trey. Uh, he spoke a little bit too quickly for my taste. And uh, then somehow I found Astro. And that boy is interesting. And then he had something to do with you. Uh, you, you had a chat with him. And then I think it was, yeah, you, was, you, you were talking about uh, the economy of the US and tracking Kenny, Kenny Griffin's plane and all that. And smoking weed and just laughing, cursing. And I felt, this is my people. Well, and if we're over I here. I never looked back after that. If we're over here, you know, dealing with the worst financial crisis in history, and we might as well have a good time while we're doing it, huh? Absolutely. So I can't smoke weed, but I'll drink some whiskey. And Cheers, brother. Since it's, since it's mostly nighttime here when you're on, I can drink whiskey without any problem. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, then I got into your Discord, and I had the privilege of speaking with you and Cash on how to do options. Had a little bit of a problem getting an, uh, a brokerage in Europe that are interested in dealing with U.S. options. But you found one. Yeah, I did. And I quickly became a fucking degenerate. <laughs> so who are you using for those people in Europe that might be interested, just out of curiosity? I'm using IBKR, Interactive Brokers. And in your country, Sweden, you're able to trade with them, right? Yeah, I am. Uh, it's, it's just an in international broker that mm -hmm. is based in Ireland, I think. So yep. it's all good. Yeah, Thomas Peterfee is the uh, CEO of interactive broker and we heard him tell us uh just after the january 2021 debacle of amc and gamestop that these stocks can quote unquote go to unimaginable highs and that's why brokers had to pull the buy button and force them to go position close only martin so yeah. yes sir where did you first hear about AMC and GameStop? Well, that was actually my douchebag colleague after he made the enormous amount of money he did. So he went and he, he made shitload of money and then came and told you about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he came and told me afterwards. At least he, he vetted it. <laughs> cleared about two, he, he, I think it was close to 250,000 bucks he made. Wow, not bad. Not bad. No, not bad at all. It's going to look like chump change on the next round. You yeah, know, but he he's sold, so fuck. he's not in it anymore. Oh, too bad. Maybe maybe he bought in on the, on the dip, with before the dip, before the dip. Maybe. Yeah. Well, some people continue to do their homework, others do not. And I think that's going to be the main difference in deciding just who gets fucking rich yeah. and who doesn't. It's it's like you 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 usually say that history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does fucking rhyme. That's right. That's right. I love that. That's an excellent way to say it. You know. And speaking of history, doesn't repeat itself, but it tends to rhyme. Uh, Michael J. Burry, Doctor Michael Burry, has told us almost the exact same things that we've already known. Things that we've been discussing on this channel since last year and you've been hearing me say this on discuss this with everybody you know american personal savings is obliterated i took a screenshot of a post that i did may 6th and it said that q1 2021 americans had 4.07 trillion dollars in their savings account as of the most recent reports, that number stands at 1.15 trillion. That means that three fourths of our savings has been wiped out. Personal savings is almost non-existent at this point. 
I emailed Dr. Burry, for those of you that are unaware, I emailed Dr. Michael J. Burry. And he didn't respond to my email, but less than 24 hours later, he did post this. He used the exact same chart on U.S. personal savings that I used. Except I used a white one from the Fred, and he used a black one from Bloomberg. In addition, he also mentioned the savings rate, which I mentioned that the savings rate was collapsing. And he stated that U.S. personal savings fell to 2013 levels. The savings rate to 2008 levels. Willow, can you stop, please? Sorry, my dog's kind of scratching. Dr. Burry told us that U.S. personal savings fell to 2013 levels and the savings rate fell to 2008 levels. Revolving credit card debt grew at a record-setting pace back to the pre-COVID peak despite all of those trillions of dollars dropped into their laps. And he's talking about the Federal Reserve printing and printing shitloads of money. Jerome Powell got the goddamn money printer out for these banks. And he's going to need to get it out one more time when he needs to bail them out from the massive fucking short squeeze and market collapse that is imminent and incoming, in my non-financial opinion, very fucking soon. June 3rd, 2022 is going to be a judgment day. And on that day, margins will be tested and many will default. I believe that you will see a vast amount of Delta hedging on stocks like AMC and GameStop and other over, overly shorted meme stocks. I truly do believe that. And I think because it's going to be a weekend, Friday and, I'm sorry, Saturday and Sunday and afterwards are going to be extremely good for retail as people will likely be sharing how many fucking thousands and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars their accounts has increased. Monday, Monday, June 6th, 2022 will likely be a continuation of that because we're going to see an expanded executive order that we saw in January and June of 2021. January 28th, May 27th, and the extension on June 3rd. And we saw February 16th edition by the United States, February, uh, the United States Treasury that the Federal Register uh, shows that there are additional regulations and more companies added to the list of these Chinese regulations. They are also publishing an amendment to the Weapons of Mass Discuss Destruction Proliferation Sanctions Regulations, revising a general existing general license authorizing the provision of certain legal services and adding a general license authorizing payments for legal services from funds originating outside the United States. However, we already know that Janet Yellen has not renewed the provisions for accepting funds from outside the United States. I tweeted it. I've showed it to you. She said it. And it's on the executive order, on a separate executive order. In addition, I do find it really interesting that aside from just commenting, Dr. Burry is unable to respond to me and likely unable to come on this channel. But he didn't only comment on one of my tweets, but two, three, technically. The second one was... My response to President Biden asking, is that why you give 18-year-olds that join the military automatic and semi-automatic weaponry? Because he said that 18-year-olds can walk into a store and buy assault weapons is just wrong. What in God's name do you need assault weapon for except to kill somebody? My thought is, it's not the gun that kills people, it's the person. And if the person is too immature to fucking use it, should they really be sold a weapon? Military personnel are trained, albeit May, many of them at the age of 18 to 21 may still be extremely mentally immature, but they're at least trained in the proper, proper use of a firearm and the proper times when to and when not to use a firearm. Dr. Burry 
also stated two more things. He says he was overwhelmed and heartsick. This should not fade. My guns never killed anyone because I didn't. But let's be reasonable and quick about it. 18 years old isn't old enough to buy guns or ammo. 21 at least, plus red flag laws, go after, plus go after anyone in the know. He also said that old enough to voluntarily join the armed forces equal old enough to buy guns and ammo? No. Soldiers selflessly give up free will, accept rigorous training, and commit to service for country over years. Few civilian 18-year-olds come close to that standard. That being the case, I truly do think that Dr. Burry is telling me and us that we are right on track. Martin, do you have anybody else? If not, I'm done. Yeah, uh, let's see if Mobile Jet has fixed his possible issues or if he's here. Are you here, Mobile Jet? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything finally got this thing figured out. Great, brother. Uh, loud Martin. and clear. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, Martin, for the time. And sorry I couldn't get with you yesterday. No, it's all good. You're you're here now, and that's important. Um, so a little on me. I'm uh, 18 years in the U.S. Coast Guard. Um, Thank you. Tired. I don't want to be out of the Coast Guard. <laughs> Probably why I'm in this play. Um, so, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody out there that has dedicated themselves and sacrificed their time away from their friends and family to serve others, protect others, help others. Um, I want to thank this Discord. I'm pretty new to it. And I uh, just recently found it, and I want to thank everybody in here as well. Um, but uh, back in 2019, I guess, I just came upon uh, Robin Hood, I guess. Uh, it seemed like a real easy app to get involved in the markets, and that's what I did. Um as we know, Robin Hood's not the greatest, but uh, back then uh, I didn't know what I was doing, None and I got it got me started. So uh, I invested in a company called Novavax right at the end of 2019, when all the things were popping off with COVID overseas, and it was trending on Robin Hood. So I just I had a bunch of money sitting in a, an account, and I took it out and bought shares and at like eight dollars a share nice it ran up to i sold around 120 a share and uh i thought well that was easy but uh, <laughs> that was just luck <laughs> doesn't work that well all the time um and uh and i saw that's being in robin hood i saw all the stuff going down in uh Hold that button again, brother. I pushed the talk button. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I saw everything going, being in Robin Hood, I saw everything going down with GameStop, them shutting off the buy button. And, uh, so you felt it firsthand. Wasn't right. <laughs> and yeah. just started getting into it and started looking around. Um, I don't have Twitter. I don't have Hold that button, brother. Because of uh, what was going on, uh, I created a, a Reddit account, joined forums, started learning, uh, started diving deep and reading myself and trying to figure it all out. 
I never really stayed with anybody, any forums. I never stayed watching all the YouTube channels because I just, it's just not really who I am. I, I'm not really into it. I just looked into it myself. Uh, but for whatever reason, I was watching YouTube a couple months ago, and one of your videos popped up, Marcel. And that's cool. We because got lucky. Of, you know, yeah, uh, I think it was one of the very first videos you start. You were dropping about, well, maybe not, but uh, about the executive order, the one four zero three two. And hold that button. Sorry, sometimes it happens. I got off YouTube and uh, started looking into it myself, just because I, I do this talk. <laughs> It's sorry, it's okay. uh, I, and I, I dug in deep myself, and I thought that was odd that I hadn't heard about that and read about that yet. And thank you for showing me that. Um, and uh, because of that video and all the research I did myself, I I decided to uh, join this Discord. And really, everybody in here just reminds me of me and all my coworkers. Um, I'm in a very small unit of about 150 people and I probably talked to about a hundred people here on this, on all this stuff that's been going on. And I've probably got about 50 people that are invested with me Damn, and we're all pretty, we're all pretty deep in it and, uh, we're all holding and, uh, I just love hearing what everybody in here has to say every day. Whether it's just talking shit to each other or giving out information, it just reminds me of my daily life in the military. And uh, just want to say thank you to everybody again. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice of so many years. Uh, I have, I hope that you'll be done very very soon my friend you said you got over 50 people or so in the amc and gamestop is that, did i hear you correct yeah i got 50 people at this unit uh right now invested with me in in uh, amc and gamestop i myself wow. and uh my wife is no longer in the military um but uh we're holding about 4k amc and about 1k gme uh, and also, uh, I awesome. love this community cause you guys are teaching me about options. I, I really didn't know about options. Um, but I kind of like them. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad uh, you've been learning you guys, brother. That's I'm, wonderful. I'm trying to learn as fast as I can. I, I get tidbits from, from you and cash and, uh, you know, and, Everybody. uh, also on that subject, uh, I want to thank Wolfie. Cause that guy, yes, sir, he's just inspirational as fuck. Uh, yeah, the money, the money. I'm kind of with Wolfie on the stance that the money's nice. It's gonna be nice. It'll, it'll help me live comfortably for till the end of my days and my kids and all that. But I kind of want to do a lot with the money and help others that aren't in this play, that don't have the money to get in this play. And I know a few of those people. So that's kind of where I'm at and where I'm headed. That's a beautiful thing. And you've got, you're going to have a lot of opportunity, I believe, you know, to help people. And it's not just handouts. Handouts don't help people. You know, it's building, is giving people jobs, you know, giving them support, giving them help, giving them a place to live. There's a lot of things that you can do with your money that I can do with my money that would allow us to help a lot of people and make their lives better while still protecting our wealth and growing our generational wealth for ourselves and our families, futures, and generations down the line. We have to help each other out, and that's the best way. I will not be giving people money. I will not be giving people handouts. But I will be creating job opportunities, good-paying job opportunities. I will be providing land and good places to live. 
and we'll be providing utilities and services and goods that people need at a reasonable price. And I think many people, such as yourself, Mobile Jet, are going to do the exact same thing. Because you've got 4,000 AMC shares and 1,000 GameStop shares. Bro, not even counting your wife, who, by the way, thank you for your service as well. It's Mobile Jet's wife, Mrs. Mobile Jet. You're going to be so fucking rich. I am extremely excited for you. I'm pumped for all of us. And I'm looking forward to the future. So thanks for sharing, man. That's thanks, that's a beautiful thing. It, man. Yeah, one day uh, maybe I'll come find you and uh, smoke a blunt with you once I'm out. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's gonna could be happening soon, my friend. So I will see you then. I will see you soon. <laughs> well, that's gonna be a good time. Post squeeze party. Oh, look at that. Now that's a beautiful thing right there. That is amazing. <laughs> I can't believe I'm on TV. <laughs> that's the craziest thing. What is going on? What in the world? Martin, do you have anybody anybody else that'd like to share with us? Or Mobile Jet, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we before we uh, call it a day here and, and enjoy the rest of the day with our friends and family? I think that's it, actually. And uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of them that is out there and their families. Yes. So thank you. Yes. Thank you to all of our military, both in the United States and around the world, that serve and protect and sacrifice the rest of us. There's not enough words, and I can't put into words how much we appreciate you and how much we owe you. So on that note, I hope that we've been able to provide a little bit of insight into what we have learned in the past and what we believe to happen in the future. But please note that we are not financial advisors. We do not have a crystal ball. We cannot see into the future. We can only speculate. That being said, I think we're going to be so fucking rich. And I wish you all peace and wealth and a happy Memorial Day. Thank you, everybody. Who wants a song? Pretty much jobless. Nobody was hiring. Everybody was... Um... It's our time, baby. We are the fucking whale. The fucking retail so whale. Goddamn rich. Millions and millions strong. I think it's time to blow this thing. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. Getting fucking rich. I want my fucking money. Griffin, I want my fucking money. He's gonna need it. No fucking mother, girl, dog. I want my fucking money. You're an original. Hey, yo, I don't need a fucking money. I'm gonna suck him like a China doll. <laughs> well done, though, no, that was awesome. Yeah, it was good, real good. 
perfect timing. I just got the Fiat done. Get the goddamn money printer out!